No man can suffer both severely and for a long time. Nature, who loves us most tenderly, has so constituted us to make pain either endurable or short. Allow me, excellent Lucilius, to utter a still bolder word. If any goods could be greater than others, I should prefer those which seem harsh to those which are mild and alluring, and should pronounce them greater. For it is more of an accomplishment to break one's way through difficulties than to keep joy within bounds. Meanwhile, hold fast to this thought and grip it close. Yield not to adversity, Trust not to prosperity. Keep before your eyes the full scope of fortune's power, as if she would surely do whatever is in her power to do. It is a rough road that leads to the heights of greatness. I am endeavoring to live every day as if it were a complete life. A good judge condemns wrongful acts, but does not hate them. For we are mistaken when we look forward to death. The major portion of death has already passed. Whatever years be behind us are in death's hands. Now a life of honor includes various kinds of conduct. It may include the chest in which Regulus was confined, or the wound of Cato, which was torn open by Cato's own hand, or the exile of Rutilius, or the cup of poison which removes Socrates from goal to heaven. He that owns himself has lost nothing, but how few men are blessed with ownership of self. A wise man is joyful, happy, and calm, unshaken. He lives on a plane with the gods. Great also are the souls of the defenders, men who know that, as long as the path to death lies open, the blockade is not complete. Men who breathe their last in the arms of liberty. I may become a poor man. I shall then be one among many. I may be exiled. I shall then regard myself as born in the place to which I shall be sent. They may put me in chains. What then? Am I free from bonds now? Behold, this clogging burden of a body to which nature has fettered me I shall die, you say. You meant to say, I shall cease to run the risk of sickness. I shall cease to run the risk of imprisonment. I shall cease to run the risk of death. It is better, of course, to know useless things than to know nothing. I should prefer that fortune keep me in her camp rather than in the lap of luxury. If I am tortured, but bear it bravely, all is well. If I die, but die bravely, it is also well. All the good of mortals is mortal. Teaching by precept is a long road, but short and beneficial is the way by example. Once again, prosperous and successful crime goes by the name of virtue. Good men obey the bad. Might is right and fear oppresses law. You are doing an excellent thing, one which will be wholesome for you, if, as you write me, you are persisting in your effort to attain sound understanding. It is foolish to pray for this when you can acquire it from yourself. We do not need to uplift our hand towards heaven or to beg the keeper of a temple to let us approach his idol's ear, as if in this way our prayers were more likely to be heard. A God is near you, with you, and in you. This is what I mean. Lucilius, there sits a Holy Spirit within us, one who marks our good and bad deeds, and is our guardian. What man can you show me who places any value on his time, who reckons the worth of each day, who understands that he is dying daily? It is disgraceful, instead of proceeding ahead, to be carried along, and then suddenly, amid the whirlpool of events, to ask in a dazed way, how did I get into this condition? The wise man will live as long as he ought, not as long as he can. Withdraw into yourself as far as you can. Associate with those who will make a better man of you. 
welcome those whom you yourself can improve. The process is mutual, for men learn while they teach. Virtue alone affords everlasting and peace-giving joy. Even if some obstacles arise, it is but like an intervening cloud, which floats beneath the sun, but never prevails against it. Live among men as if God beheld you, and speak with God as if men were listening. Before I became old, I tried to live well. Now that I am old, I shall try to die well. But dying well means dying gladly. Drunkenness is nothing but voluntary madness. You have, dearest Serene, things that can protect tranquility, things that restore it, things that resist creeping escapes. Be it known, however, that none of these things is sufficient for those who hold a feeble matter, unless a constant concern surrounds the slipping mind. Our plans miscarry because they have no aim. When a man does not know what harbor he is making for, no wind is the right wind. This is why we give to children a proverb, or that which the Greek called shria, to be learned by heart. That sort of thing can be comprehended by the young mind, which cannot as yet hold more. For a man, however, whose progress is definite, to chase after choice extracts and to prop his weaknesses by the best known and briefest sayings and to depend on his memory is disgraceful. It is time for him to lean on himself. He should make such maxims and not memorize them, for it is disgraceful even for an old man or one who has cited old age to have a notebook knowledge. This is what Zeno said. But what have you yourself said? This is the opinion of Clenthes. But what is your own opinion? How long shall you march under another man's orders? Take command and utter some word which posterity will remember. Put forth something from your own stock. Of war men ask the outcome, not the cause. Would you know what makes men greedy for the future? It is because no one has yet found himself. There is no sorrow in the world when we have escaped from the fear of death. Whatever happens, assume that it was bound to happen, and do not be willing to rail at nature. That which you cannot reform, it is best to endure, and to attend uncomplainingly upon the God under whose guidance everything progresses. Then it is that the height of unhappiness is reached, when men are not only attracted, but even pleased by shameful things, and when there is no longer any room for a cure, now that those things which once were vices have become habits. We are weak, watery beings, standing in the midst of unrealities. Therefore, let us turn our minds to the things that are everlasting. It is best to bear what cannot be changed. Men do not care how nobly they live, but only how long, although it is within the reach of every man to live nobly, but within no man's power to live long. I should prefer to be free from torture, but if the time comes when it must be endured, I shall desire that I may conduct myself therein with bravery, honor, and courage. Of course, I prefer that war should not occur, but if war does occur, I shall desire that I may nobly endure the wounds, the starvation, and all that the exigency of war brings. Nor am I so mad as to crave illness, but if I must suffer illness, I shall desire that I may do nothing which shows lack of restraint and nothing that is unmanly. The conclusion is, not that hardships are desirable, but that virtue is desirable, which enables us patiently to endure hardships. There is no reason why poverty should call us away from philosophy, no, nor even actual want, for when hastening after wisdom, we must endure even hunger. Men have endured hunger when their towns were besieged, and what other reward for their endurance did they obtain than that they did not fall under the conqueror's power? How much greater is the promise of the prize of everlasting liberty, and the assurance that we need fear neither God nor man, 
Even though we starve, we must reach that goal. Fire tries gold. Misfortune tries brave men. Would you really know what philosophy offers to humanity? Philosophy offers counsel. Imagine that nature is saying to us, Those things of which you complain are the same for all. I cannot give anything easier to any man, but whoever wishes will make things easier for himself. In what way? By equanimity. You must suffer pain and thirst and hunger and old age too. If a longer stay among men shall be granted you, you must be sick and you must suffer loss and death. Let us greedily enjoy our friends, because we do not know how long this privilege will be ours. Very often, the thing that costs nothing costs us the most heavily. I can show you many objects the quest and acquisition of which have wrested freedom from our hands. If you would not have a man flinch when the crisis comes, train him before it comes. All cruelty springs from weakness. Virtue runs no risk of becoming contemptible by being exposed to view, and it is better to be despised for simplicity than to be tormented by continual hypocrisy. Man is a reasoning animal. New friends, however, will not be the same. No, nor will you yourself remain the same. You change with every day and every hour. It is the quality of a great soul to scorn great things and to prefer that which is ordinary rather than that which is too great. Prove your words by your deeds. I do not know whether I shall make progress, but I should prefer to lack success rather than to lack faith. Clothe yourself with a hero's courage and withdraw for a little space from the opinions of the common man. Form a proper conception of the image of virtue, a thing of exceeding beauty and grandeur. This image is not to be worshipped by us with incense or garlands, but with sweat and blood. If you are wise, mingle these two elements. Do not hope without despair or despair without hope. We give voice to our trivial cares, but suffer enormities in silence. Anger, as we have said, is eager to punish, and that such a desire should exist in man's peaceful breast is least of all according to his nature. For human life is founded on benefits and harmony and is bound together into an alliance for the common help of all, not by terror, but by love towards one another. He who boasts of his descent praises the deeds of another. It is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more that is poor. But the wise man is fortified against all inroads. He is alert. He will not retreat before the attack of poverty, or of sorrow, or of disgrace, or of pain. He will walk undaunted, both against them and among them. Treat your inferiors as you would be treated by your betters. No man can have a peaceful life who thinks too much about lengthening it. That man lives badly who does not know how to die well. You will have less money, yes, and less trouble, less influence, yes, and less envy. Besides, he who is feared, fears also. No one has been able to arouse terror and live in peace of mind. You need a change of soul rather than a change of climate. If one doesn't know his mistakes, he won't want to correct them. Whatever can happen at any time can happen today. We are all chained to fortune. The chain of one is made of gold and wide, while that of another is short and rusty. But what difference does it make? The same prison surrounds all of us, and even those who have bound others are bound themselves. Unless perchance you think that a chain on the left side is lighter. Honors bind one man, 
wealth another, nobility oppresses some, humility others. Some are held in subjection by an external power, while others obey the tyrant within. Banishments keep some in place, the priesthood others. All life is slavery. Therefore, each one must accustom himself to his own conditions and complain about it as little as possible, and lay hold of whatever good is to be found near him. Nothing is so bitter that a calm mind cannot find comfort in. Small tablets, because of the writer's skill, have often served for many purposes, and a clever arrangement has often made a very narrow piece of land habitable. Apply reason to difficulties. Harsh circumstances can be softened, narrow limits can be widened, and burdensome things can be made to press less severely on those who bear them cleverly. No man ought to glory except in that which is his own. Nothing becomes so offensive so quickly as grief. When fresh, it finds someone to console it. But when it becomes chronic, it is ridiculed and rightly.